In today's A-level IB biology video, we're going to be looking further at ATP and we're looking at the roles of ATP. If you want to look at the equations and what it's actually made up of, you want to watch the previous video. So, the roles of ATP. Notice that we say it's an immediate energy source. And the reason we think it's a good immediate energy source is because its phosphate bonds are unstable. And actually what you find is that cells don't store large quantities of ATP. They actually just have a few seconds supply and then they can rapidly make more as and when needed by adding a phosphate to ADP. So why do we prefer to use ATP as an immediate energy source compared with glucose? Well, that's for two reasons. Firstly, the hydrolysis of ATP to ADP is a single reaction that releases immediate energy, whereas the breakdown of glucose is a long series of reactions and therefore clearly the energy release will be much slower. And then secondly, bizarrely, each ATP molecule releases far less energy than a glucose mo molecule. Well, you might think that that is a bad thing, because surely more energy is better. But crucially, this energy is far more manageable and therefore easier to use in chemical reactions. One thing you must be aware of is that ATP cannot be stored. It needs to be rapidly made as and when it's needed. Now remember ATP is made within the mitochondria of cells. So let's think about different types of tissue or cell that might require more mitochondria because they have higher energy requirements. And so you might imagine that muscle fibers, because they're constantly contracting and relaxing, and cells of the small intestine, so the epithelial cells of the small intestine. Lots of active transport takes place here, so therefore we need lots of mitochondria in both muscle fibres and the epithelial of the small intestine. So, what is ATP used for? Well, try and think of any energy requiring processes which take place in cells. So, first of all, metabolic processes. The energy released from ATP is used to build up macromolecules, so large molecules, from their basic subunits. So, for example, we could use glucose to build up the large macromolecule starch. We could use amino acids to build up polypeptides. Next up, we've already touched on this to do with muscle fibres movement. Energy from ATP is used in muscle contraction. So crucially, with muscle contraction, the ATP is used to help the filaments of the muscle slide past each other. And when they slide past each other, they go from being like this to being more stacked up. And so you can see that the muscle fibers sliding past each other shorten, and that's how you get contraction to take place. The third ATP use, probably one of the most obvious ones for you guys, active transport. which remember is the movement of molecules or ions against the concentration gradient, so from an area of low concentration to high concentration. And at A level and IB level, you need to know a bit more about this. So actually the ATP provides the energy to change the shape of the carrier proteins in plasma membranes, which actually carry out active transport. Next up, ATP is used in secretion, namely that the ATP is needed to form the lysosomes, which 
are needed to secrete cell products. And then the last thing ATP is used for, which is probably the most complicated, is the activation of molecules. So remember, during the hydrolysis of ATP, you produce ADP and the inorganic phosphate, which is here, and this is energy. Now this inorganic phosphate can be used to phosphorylate other compounds in order to make them more reactive. Now this is a good thing and it's actually due to a chemistry reason because what it does is it lowers the activation and en energy in enzyme catalyzed reactions. And remember activation energy is the minimum amount of energy required for a reaction to occur. So if you lower it, this is a good thing. And let's name a specific example of this and that could be the addition of phosphate to glucose molecules at the start of glycolysis. And I don't want to talk too much about this right now because that's a whole different video, but just to remind you that glycolysis is the first part of respiration in which glucose is broken down anaerobically, so without oxygen, in the cytoplasm to produce two molecules of pyruvate. Right guys, hope you found this video helpful. I'll be back soon with another A-level IB biology video. Take care.